Great to have you guys here. Um, with the low slash no alcohol movement um, becoming an increasingly big thing, um, what has Lucky Saint had to do to stand out from the more established competition, like your, your Bud Lights and people like that? I think for us, it's really about being an aspirational brand that people want in their hand. Um, you know, we really don't want to ever um, slag off what the big brands are doing because they're doing an amazing job at normalising alcohol-free on a large scale. But realistically, people kind of order those brands under their breath at the bar. They're not proud to have them. And, you know, if someone's coming to your house and they're not drinking, you might apologise for having that sure. to give them. Whereas with Lucky Saint, we're really proud to be a dedicated alcohol-free beer brand. And our brand is just as important as the liquid inside the bottle. And we get lots of feedback that people love having the brand in their hand. They love that when they go to the pub, it's proudly there on the bar. Um, so I think that's part of the reason that we really stand out. Um, and then also we don't use any flavorings or additives. Lots of other brands do tend to use that to shortcut to make it taste like beer, but we really are a beer. Um, we just remove the alcohol at the end. So I think those are probably the two big mm. things that it's we do to stand out. Letting the product uh, speak for itself. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so what are the key challenges that Lucky Saint faces when trying to embrace sustainability? Yeah. It's been a long journey for us to, to get to where we are with the B Corp and I think there's three sort of things that I, I really put down to it. It's been like an 18 month journey. The first is that B Corp is intentionally, you know, it, it's challenging. They want you to always, you know, consistently improve on what you're doing. And there is a hurdle rate that you have to achieve in order to become, you know, kind of press go and become a B Corp. So first of all, it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's meant to be challenging. When we started, we only had 40 of the 80 points that we would, would have needed. So we've had to do a lot of work along the way. More so, I mean, average companies would have 50 points. Uh, we had 40, which is probably reflective of the fact that we were a startup mm -hmm. at that point. Um, the second thing that we found quite hard um, is that we, at, at certain points, we've had additional support, but we have been doing it kind of, you know, as our day job. And the third point I've just forgotten. Yeah, oh my god, because it that that's part of what I'm saying. And it I'm will come to you. It will come to you, don't worry. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's really, really three really important yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. oh dear. I think that is part of it though, having having people do it internally yeah. means that as well as running a busy startup you're also taking on this huge challenge yeah. of becoming a B Corp. And that is at once kind of a brilliant thing because it means that everyone's super engaged and everyone in the team feels involved, but it's also a huge pull on time. Massive and, amount yeah. of pressure. Yeah, so you kind of have to, you have to make it part of the job, not yeah. an additional job. So, um, and also what, uh, what is Lucky Saint doing to make brewing a more sustainable practice? Um, hmm. It's pretty hard to talk about this bit, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, only because we use um, a co-manufacturer for our brewing. We don't have our own brewery. So how much we are getting involved in that is really quite small scale currently. Um, at some point, who's to say, you know, where, what, what, what our brewing capacity needs to be um, and, you know, where that needs to be. And at that point, I think we'll be able to get involved in more oh, sustainability. Okay. Um, currently, our brewery um, in Germany, you know, in, in, in the UK, there are nearly 600 um, B Corps. The next uh, U, U, EU country is France with only 150, and Germany has less than that. None of them are breweries. So, so there is a lot to do. There's kind of a lot of education to do to, um, yeah, just to get them involved in, in what B Corp is and understand the, the, you know, the benefits that can, it can have um, for them and for their other customers as well as on the planet. So obviously you guys have done a tremendous amount of work at Lucky Saint, getting the product out to market and developing such a great product. What, um, what are the next steps for you? Well, our ambition is to become the world's defining alcohol-free brand. We kind of talk about being what Guinness is to stout, we want Lucky Saint to be to alcohol-free beer. Um, so the plan is to launch internationally. Um, and I think, yeah, we, we're very focused on our one product, our lager. Um, we don't have a kind of massive innovation pipeline because we talk a lot about doing the right thing well and doing one thing well. So we're very focused on our lager. Draft is massive for us this year. Mm. We launched on Draft just before the pandemic. It got off to a great start and then all the bars and restaurants closed. <laughs> um, but I think that that's the focus for this year is really um, championing Draft. We're in 250 pubs at the moment. Um, the aim is to be in 600 by the end of the year. 
and then world domination Amazing. after that <laughs> is the plan I think absolutely um, so Lucky Scent is a brand that's facilitating a lifestyle movement for consumers how are you facilitating this adoption through your marketing um, and have you experienced any challenges in doing so I think for us it's really about balance we we make a really concerted effort not to talk about hangovers or make people feel bad about drinking alcohol because the vast majority of people who drink Lucky Saint are moderators, they're not teetotalers. So they don't want to hear about, you know, how drinking's terrible for you or um, any of the negatives of, of drinking. They want to hear about the positives of alcohol free. Um, so we really try to weave that through our tone of voice, our marketing. We never talk about compromise. We never talk about, the, you know, um, hangover free or guilt free because people enjoy a drink and, that, and that's fine. It's more about balance and moderation. So some of the partnerships that we have, for example, we're about to launch a partnership with Strava. We've been doing lots of work with Garmin. And I think those brands are about embracing that active lifestyle in a way that you know is is a balanced life it's not about making people feel bad or encouraging them to lose weight it's just about enjoying your life to the maximum so throughout our marketing and our partnerships and our tone of voice and everything to do with our brand we very much talk about the positives and we really steer away from you know even some brands say when it's alcohol free they say you know without compromise but our md emma talks about you know if you say don't think about a pink elephant the first thing you think about is a pink elephant so <laughs> if we say you know without compromise the first thing you think well like, that feels like a compromise um so we really talk about in our marketing like the moment of drinking our beer the pint that you have in the pub with your friends we don't tend to talk about you know but you're not going to have a hangover the next day because it's more about the moment of enjoyment. Enjoying that, that product that you've worked so hard to create. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. That's everything. I'm can finished. I answer the Sorry, I'm sure. just really intrigued on what you've been saying. Sorry, I can't, I can't help myself. Did you kind of know who your ideal demographic was? Did you have your consumer in mind kind of when the business is, was really at that kind of foundational stage? Or have you been quite surprised by who might have picked it up since that point? I think... We, our gut feel was right, that it is this kind of 25 to 45 year old, men and women, we're about 50-50 male and female, because I truly believe beer is not just for guys, I love beer. Um, and so, you know, the kind of people that you might expect enjoy an active lifestyle, they love food, they love balance. I suppose sometimes we're surprised with the way people enjoy our products. So we've been hearing a lot recently that people have been ordering Lucky Saint Shandies in pubs. So oh. half Lucky Saint, half alcoholic beer as a way to... Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not something that we're really going to be pushing in our marketing, but, you know, if that's how people want to drink us. So I think um, that's been a surprise, the way that some people have, you know, are drinking our beer. Um, but in general, I suppose we don't really talk about it as... A specific demographic it's more about a mindset and mm. I think just from working at Lucky Saint we've all sort of through osmosis kind of adopted this balanced lifestyle like whenever we have work drinks everyone genuinely has mm. a Lucky Saint first and that's not because our founders like looking over our shoulder waiting for us to order one like it just it's just a natural thing and I think that's that's what's really nice kind of internally as well yeah. it's quite a lot about community isn't it I suppose yeah and just not making people feel left out you know when you're out and about and you know we had a work party recently and it was great to enjoy a few drinks but you don't want someone who's there who's not maybe not drinking to feel like they're not included yeah and you know with lucky saint being on draft as well you can have a pint you've still got that social aspect yeah it, exactly yeah. that yeah and we'll be talking a little bit about that yeah amazing well sorry not to <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers <laughs> thank you so much that was amazing brilliant thank, thank you, you. Thank you.